what I have now embarked on is more on fiction writing and the stories about my uh, memories of the patients that used to come to me after I became a doctor and returned to the village. The book is called Chief Complaint, A Country Doctor's Tales of Life in Galilee. My uh, uh, conviction is that uh, you start talking politics and you lose touch with the other side and you really, uh, a wall comes down between the, the, the two sides. And so my uh, intention and my plan and what I have been doing is trying to tell an interesting story, tell, have people read my stories because they are um, interesting stories. It, they are a human uh, accounts of a human experience and so on. And uh, in that uh, uh, account of humanity and of uh, stories uh, taken actually from uh, real life, between the lines people get to realize where this is coming from. There to realize where, where what what the conflict is doing to uh, human beings, uh, to to Palestinians as as uh, native population of the land uh, who are still uh, connected to the uh, to, to their little piece of, of land and to their uh, reality. My decision was taken uh, uh, in response to the late uh, uh, Professor Edward Said's call on the Palestinians to narrate their truth. And this is my attempt to respond to that call. Tell the world, and uh, especially those in the world who really uh, decide our future, the American electorate. And, and, <laughs> and, uh, and they, after all, the average American, in the uh, ultimate sense, decides what happens in the Middle East and in, in, in Israel and Palestine. It def decides the future of my community for me. All the stories uh, carry the, uh, the name of certain either disease or complaint. That's why it's called chief complaint, the main complaint that brings the patient to the doctor or brought, brought those patients to me. And the last one is called ins insomnia insomnia. And uh, it is um, the, the, the basic story is about two Palestinian young men meeting in 2010 in Berlin. And one is the owner of a little restaurant, Falafel Stand, and the other is a, uh, a Palestinian who is coming on a tour to Berlin He's coming from Denmark. Uh, grandmother had left the coffee make making pots, the copper pots to make the traditional Arabic coffee. Uh, the, she left them with a family in the village of Der Hanna. This restaurant tour actually is the grandson of the lady who's promised to keep those coffee-making pots for his grandmother. And so they immediately on the phone, they call. This is 2010, and they have their mobile phones. And they, he calls his father, and he asks about those coffee pots. Did you ever hear such a story? And the uh, father says, oh, yes, my mother used to tell us about that. And so he goes and the old lady is already hard of hearing and she has trouble explaining to her what he wants to ask about. And he points to where the village of Luby was and says, Luby, Luby, coffee pots and so on. And she understands and she gets up. She has been uh, uh, really uh, bedridden for like three years and she gets up on her own and goes and gets those pots from a a hidden uh, uh, place in the corner of her room and the, the pots are still there. And so the young man comes to Israel to collect those pots. 
he arrives at the airport and he's not allowed in because he identifies himself as Palestinian or says something that's a little uh, uh, unpleasant for the uh, uh, security officer at the airport. And so they turn him back. He goes back and he sends his grandfather to collect those pots. The grandfather comes to the existing village of Deir Hanna, and in Deir Hanna, he finds out that actually the family that's keeping those pots is the family of somebody who used to work for him. His age mate that was working for him in uh, Luby at the time Luby fell. And Luby was one of the earliest Palestinian villages to be destroyed completely right after it, the, the uh, Israeli army took it over destroyed all the houses, blew up all the houses. And so the two of them go and visit the remains of Luby. And the remains of Luby are now under a forest called the South Africa Forest because they, uh, the uh, Jewish community in South Africa uh, provided the financial support to plant that for us there and to develop it and so on. And so they, uh, I gave a bit of an account about how they go and looking for the, uh, uh, the place where the house of this old man used to be and uh, where they used to, uh, uh, to, to uh, store all of their produce from the land and all of that. And at any rate, they go after visiting the destroyed village and the remains of this, and there is a little uh, cemetery that's still intact with the graves and so on. And they go back to Deir Hanna, and in Deir Hanna, they proceed to make coffee in those pots. Okay, and then the boy from uh, uh, Denmark calls his grandfather, and he uh, consults with his grandfather because he had an idea. And the idea says, you know, the opinion, uh, that that's the only, the only physical link I still have with Palestine. I don't want those pots. Keep them in Palestine for me. That's essentially the story. Dr. Kanani will be on a book tour in the United States throughout fall 2015 and winter of 2016. To schedule a talk or book event at your venue, please contact him directly at hatimkanane at gmail.com. You can also contact Dr. Kanane through his publisher, Just World Books, at events at justworldbooks.com or by phone, 888-506-3762.